to know. Let's go and at some problems. All right, let's talk about hybridizations, the hybridization of these carbons. Well, if we look at both carbons, they each have one, two, three electron domains. One, two, three electron domains. Remember, a double bond counts as a single electron domain. So both of these carbons here are sp2 hybridized. If we look at this carbon, I'll highlight it in green. All right, there are one, two, three, four electron domains around that carbon, which means it is sp3 hybridized. If we look at both of these carbons, there are one, two electron domains around each carbon. Remember, triple bonds also count as a single electron domain. So we have one, two electron domains around this carbon and one, two electron domains around this carbon, which means they're both linear geometry and sp hybridized. And this carbon here, similarly to the carbon we did in green, is also sp3 hybridized, has 109.5 degree bond angles and it's tetrahedral. Let's look at the second molecule here. If you look at the iodine, there are one, two, three, four, five, six electron domains around this iodine. Which means that the iodine must be sp3d2 hybridized. We don't know what's going on with the chlorines. We can't actually answer that. So we're mostly just interested in the central atom. All right, let's go on and look at a couple of more problems. All right, this carbon here, you should be able to look at it and say, oh, there are one, two, three, four electron domains around it. Therefore, it's sp3 hybridized. The bond angle is 109.5 degrees, and it's a tetrahedral carbon. This carbon here has one, two electron domains around it, which means it is sp hybridized, as is the nitrogen. And if we look at phosphorus pentachloride, if we look at the phosphorus, there are one, two, three, four, five electron domains around the phosphorus, which is consistent with an expanded octet. But five electron domains means that my phosphorus is sp3d hybridized. I hope you found this helpful, and we will talk another.